from Wyoming. Thank you, Mr. President. I come to the floor to join my friend and colleague from South Dakota to oppose the Democrats' reckless tax and spending spree. 18 days left until Christmas. So who is on the Democrats' shopping list this year? Well, it's the same people who are on the list every year. Illegal immigrants, union bosses, professional activists, and the donor class of millionaires. Democrats' reckless tax and spending bill, they all get big presents from the government. The rest of America gets more spending, more taxes, more debt, higher prices as they're already struggling and suffering under the largest, highest inflation in the last 30 years. Democrats call the bill Build Back Better. For most Americans, it is a break your back bill. In this bill, Chuck Schumer's hometown will get tens of billions of dollars to bail out their public housing authority. Joe Biden likes to say, if you want to know somebody's values, he says, look at their budget. Well, let's look at the budget that the Democrats are putting forth, because the second most expensive item in this bill is a tax break for millionaires and billionaires in New York, in New Jersey, in California, and in Chicago. The cost of that sole component, $275 billion, which will have to be paid by the hardworking men and women of this country. This is one of the bill's top expenses because it's a top priority for Democrat elites. Under the Democrats' bill, the bottom 60 percent of Americans would get zero of those dollars. $275 billion to the richest of the rich. In 2016, nearly half of the money went to just four states, California, New York, Illinois, and New Jersey. Rural states like Wyoming, Alaska, North Dakota, South Dakota, West Virginia received the lowest amounts of tax relief. Democrats want the people in states like Wyoming and West Virginia to pay for these tax cuts for the millionaires of California and New York. Under this legislation, low-tax states would essentially subsidize high-tax states. What's this going to do to the high-tax states? Well, it will encourage them to raise state taxes, which is probably another reason that Democrats support it. Democrats have also lots of Christmas presents in this bill for people who come to this country illegally. The, parliament, the parliamentarian has said Democrats can't pass amnesty for illegal immigrants in a previous version of the bill. But Democrats want illegal amnesty, amnesty for illegal immigrants so badly that they're going to try all over again. Let me remind you, this is a spending bill. It is not an immigration bill. Democrats know that they don't have the votes to pass the immigration bill that they would like to see. Frankly, they know they will never have enough votes in the Senate for an amnesty bill for illegal immigrants. So they're trying to cram it into a spending bill. Democrats are hoping that the American people won't notice. Democrats have their way. This spending spree would be the most consequential immigration bill in half a century. The bill would give amnesty to six and a half million people in the country illegally. It would also give them five new entitlements. The bill includes new permanent welfare programs. There'd be no work requirements, not a single one, no citizenship requirements. This includes free child care, free preschool, and even free money for college. Now, this is in addition to the $300 check every month for every child Democrats already send to illegal immigrants that they've sent earlier this year. So it's shaping up to be a long December for American workers and taxpayers. And people know it because we've already had the most expensive Thanksgiving ever. And on Friday, we saw one of the most disappointing job reports, reports in a disappointing year. The job report says we created less than half the number of jobs that the experts predicted that we would, predict, that we would produce last month. Still, almost 4 million fewer Americans working than before the pandemic. 
Same time, inflation is only getting worse. People in all our states are wondering if they're going to be able to afford to have presents under the tree this year. Wondering if they can even afford a tree at all because, of course, the cost of Christmas trees are up 30 percent. 30 percent more this year than last. More and more Americans find they're heading to, stop, to shop at the dollar stores. Yet many dollar stores, as you've seen in the press, aren't dollar stores anymore. Dollar Tree is selling more and more items for a dollar and a quarter. Dollar General is opening new stores with a $5 or less business model. Prices are going up everywhere you look. One of the reasons for inflation in Joe Biden's economy is the rising cost of energy. Natural gas, seven-year high. Winter's almost here. Prices are up dramatically. Price of gas at the pump is at a seven-year high as well. Yet Biden and the Democrats say everything is fine. It is just fascinating, Mr. President. Last week, the Democrat headquarters sent out a tweet. It was a graph showing gas prices had dropped by two cents over a week. The caption was, thanks, Joe Biden. I actually thought it was a joke. It was serious. They actually said, hey, good. Price of gas up a dollar and a quarter since he took office, but they dropped two cents last week. And let's celebrate the success of Joe Biden. This is just another example of Democrats' bad math. It's an example also of Democrat leaders who are completely out of touch. Gas is up, dollar and a quarter gallon since Joe Biden took office. Two cent drop is hardly enough. So, Mr. President, here's my two cents worth. The American people don't want pennies from Joe Biden. They want a refund from the last election. That's what they deserve. They want affordable, available, reliable American energy. Joe Biden said last week, I have used every tool to address price increases. On the contrary, President Biden has used every tool to drive up prices. He has attacked American energy. He's driven up costs for all Americans. He's shut down the Keystone Pipeline, is threatening other pipelines. He's blocked oil and gas leases on federal land, and he's threatened to raise taxes on the production of natural gas. We're now producing about 2 million barrels of oil a day, less than before the pandemic. And the Secretary of Transportation thinks he has a simple solution to the energy crisis. This is what Pete Buttigieg said. He said it's easy. He said last week, families who buy electric cars never have to worry about gas prices again. Well, it's simply false. You would think somebody as educated as the Secretary of, Treasure, of Transportation would intuitively say gas prices affect grocery prices. Gas prices affect retail prices. And the price of just about everything else. Look, even for the Biden administration, this is really out of touch with mainstream America or people that live anywhere outside the bubble of the Beltway. People who are struggling with inflation can't afford to go out and buy an electric vehicle. Seniors and families just starting out aren't going to go out and buy an $80,000 electric vehicle. We know who buys these luxury vehicles. More than 80 percent of the federal subsidies for electric vehicles go to people making more than $100,000 a year. And unlike the rest of people on the roads, these drivers use the roads for free. The Democrats make sure to include electric vehicle owners on their shopping list this year. This bill would give $12,500 $12,500 to couples making up to a half a million dollars a year if they buy a luxury electric vehicle. This includes vans, SUVs, and trucks costing up to $80,000. The bill also includes $900 payouts to people who buy electric bicycles. It's, it's already been a long December for the American people, and we're only at December 7th. Yet it must be an exciting time for the Democrats' favorite groups. Democrats have always liked to play Santa Claus. And this year, they've got a list of who they consider America's good little boys and girls. Who's on the list? 
Well, as I star said a few minutes ago, it's illegal immigrants, union bosses, professional activists, and the millionaires who live in the penthouses of New York and the mansions of San Francisco and Hollywood. Working class, middle America, those families, they're the ones who are going to get stuck with the bill. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.